Hey everyone, I wanted to talk about an interesting problem that I ran into while developing Botland. This video is slightly technical, but I tried to make it as accessible as possible. First, I need to share a little about the game itself. Botland is an online strategy game with a focus on automation. You make bots out of different weapons and defensive parts, then you get to customize exactly what they'll do in battle using the scripting system. If you want them to cluster together, shield themselves, then teleport behind enemy lines, you can set that up here. Once the battle starts, it's entirely automated, so your scripts can make or break your strategy. Because it's a multiplayer game, obviously there has to be a way for players to play against each other, and I chose to host Botland servers centrally on the cloud. The reasons for that decision aren't important for this video. What is important is that players expect centralized servers like these to be available as much as possible. We're going to focus on the account servers and how players talk to them. Account servers are really just proxies for the other endpoints. If you're joining a match, it'll contact the matchmaker. If you're battling someone else, it'll reach out to a game server. And most requests involve the database. To plan for scalability, we have multiple account servers so that requests can be handled at any given time. This is where the load balancer comes in. Its name is quite literal. It's balancing the load across the endpoints behind it, in this case account servers, that way no single server is overburdened. This system would work well in a world where two conditions are met. One, more account servers get spun up when the demand is too high for the current number to handle. And two, users aren't jerks. Number one is easy enough to accommodate. Most cloud platforms have a way to provision more virtual machines. Number two, well, we're on the internet, aren't we? I'm referring to denial of service attacks. This term encompasses many different specific attacks, so I'll narrow it down even further to one that I tried to block. Someone repeatedly spamming the account servers with valid requests. This would make the servers try to handle more than they can, which could either force more servers to be spun up, or could cause regular players' requests to be denied. To solve this, I decided to limit how many requests a single player was allowed to make per second. I'm using Node.js and a library called Restify, and in my research, I discovered that Restify has a facility for this behavior exactly, a plugin called Throttle. I enabled it with the IP option, meaning that if a single IP address was the cause of too many requests, it would get rejected until it was under the limit again. I dusted my hands off and forgot about the code. All of that was just background information that you needed to know before we could talk about the bug. In January of this year, I released the alpha of Botland. The audience was unofficially limited to people who watch my Twitch stream, so I wasn't worried about having too many players. I'd forgotten condition number two from earlier though, that people can be jerks. One day, players reported that they were getting rate limited while performing legitimate actions. I tested for myself by trying to save my defense in the game, and I got this error message. I knew there was a problem with rate limiting because I didn't just perform 10 requests per second, but I didn't know what the problem was. I enabled access logs on my cloud platform, I figured out the IP address that the spam was coming from, and then I set up a firewall rule to block that IP address specifically. This was just a band-aid fix, so I wrote down the details about the bug and moved on with development. Eight months passed and it was now September 12th, 2017. The bug had never resurfaced, but I knew I had to investigate. Investigating was fun. First, I tried to make the smallest possible set of steps to reproduce the bug. I started by making a test API on the account server. This is called test spam. All this does is it runs through Restify's throttle middleware. And if that did not rate limit the user, it'll log the IP address and then just return success. With this in place, I could start spamming it. I wrote a quick script that would infinitely call into this URL, the test spam URL that we just made. And I got rate limited after 10 requests per second. This may sound silly because of how basic that test is, but it was worth verifying. I now knew that the Restify plugin did work. Next, I wanted to see if the rate limiting was somehow not considering IP addresses at all. To clarify, I was wondering if Restify would correctly differentiate between five people sending one request each and one person sending five requests. I fired up a virtual machine, that way my IP address would be different since this was all running on my local network. My spam script was still running on my physical machine, so all I really had to do was try a few requests on the virtual machine, but I ran this same script there too. Each machine was allowed 10 requests per second, which meant that Restify was working correctly. It was considering each IP address individually. With that fact in mind, I had a hunch as to what the problem was. Remember this diagram? All public requests go through the load balancer. I was worried that the load balancer's IP address 
was being received by the account server instead of the client's IP address. To test this, I decided I would spam the production server myself using my script. Then I would ask my viewers on Twitch to simply try loading a URL in their browsers. They got rate limited. This confirmed that my hunch was indeed the source of the problem. The load balancer's IP address was the only IP address that my account servers ever saw. This means that if 100 people were all trying to perform some action over the course of a single second, most of them would be rejected with a rate limit error. We know the bug, how do we fix it? Well, there are actually two problems to solve. The first problem is that we shouldn't have Restify consider the IP address of the load balancer. Turns out that was easy enough. When the particular load balancer that I'm using forwards requests from clients to the account server, it can add an X forwarded for HTTP header that has the client's address in it. I needed to rate limit based on that address, not based on the load balancers. Restify provides a simple option for this. Earlier, we were using the IP option. Now, we just needed to use the XFF or X forwarded for option. I enabled that and concluded problem number one. The second problem involves considering what will happen when there are multiple account servers in the mix. Each one is running Restify and will thus have its own cache of these X forwarded for IP addresses. That means that if clients get load balanced in a particular way, they could bypass the rate limiting by spreading requests over multiple servers. For example, let's say we only allowed one request per second. If a client sends three requests to a single server in one second, two will be denied. However, if the load balancer spreads these requests out over all three servers, then they'll all be allowed to go through, which means that the player will have bypassed rate limiting. I came up with two different ways that could be used to fix this. The way that I settled on is something called sticky or persistent sessions. This is a feature of load balancers that routes a particular IP address to a particular backend server for a certain duration. Back to our example from before, if you send three requests in a second to the load balancer with sticky sessions enabled, you'll get stuck to a certain account server, which means that it will deny two of these requests as intended. There's no way for you to be load balanced such that the three requests go to separate account servers anymore. I went with this solution because it took about 10 seconds to enable and it solved my problem. Just for reference though, I'll tell you about the other solution I thought of. It's to share the IP cache between the account servers. This would typically be done with an in-memory cache that all of the servers would reach out to before processing a request. That's it for the problem and the solution. I just want to point out that this process of finding critical bugs may seem obvious in hindsight, but if you're ever running into this with your code, don't be too hard on yourself. This took me a few hours to figure out, and that's with real-time help from viewers on Twitch. If you want to watch that process or play Botland, here are the URLs. Hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.